Good evening, everyone. And uh, welcome to the Link Baptist Church. It is so vitally important that as much as humanly possible, let's really try to have unity in the name of Jesus. That being said, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we do give you praise tonight in Jesus' name. We say we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you so much for who you are, first and foremost, for who you are. Just for who you are, Lord, that you are God Almighty all by yourself. And Lord, we thank you for this precious gift of salvation, how you saved us, so how at Calvary you redeemed us back to you. So Lord, coming in our Bible study tonight, speak to us, Lord. We pray that we can speak back with you, that everything that's said and everything that's done will bring you glory and bring you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we, at last week, the Lord gave me a little information to give to the church as far as grace. And Jeremiah records in the book of Lamentations in chapter 3, verse 22 and 3, 23, he says, The steadfast, the strong, the steadfast love of the Lord, it never ceases, it never ends. His mercies never ceases. They never come to an end. They are new every morning. Then he signs off by saying, great is your faithfulness. Let me ask you something, people of God. That if his tender mercies are new every day, how many mercies have you used up already today by itself? Somebody count them up for me. How many mercies have you used today that God gave you? How many have you used? Probably can't count them. But how many mercies have you given out compared to God's mercies that he gave to you? Are we together? Now, God's mercies are new every day. We use up all the mercies of Tuesday. We use them up on Tuesday. None of them are saved. Not a one of them is saved till, till Wednesday. So if we use up all these mercies today, out of all that God gave to you, it's a form of grace. But how much did you give to somebody else? And I'll show you that in a little while. I should. How much have you given to someone else? What I found was in the Christian church that there are so many people who do not understand this ridiculous grace that Christ brought to the world. They don't understand this thing. And I told you last week that um, grace is God giving us what we do not deserve. Mercy is God not giving us what we do deserve. And I think being a 57-year-old parent and grandparent, I see a lot of mistakes that people make, and uh, younger people, and I really wish that they would learn before they go through the trials and tribulations of life to, so you can tell them what grace really means and what, what you've been through. But most of them, so many of them, feel like they have to live it for themselves, and that's, the wrong, that's, that's just wrong. You can, you can accept that for yourself, but you're still wrong. Last week we talked about common grace, saving grace, sanctifying grace, provisional grace, miraculous grace, and I think we ended on serving grace. And we're at sustaining grace tonight, is that right? All right, do we have, all right, let me, let's, let's go to sustaining grace, please. All right, sustaining grace. Here is probably, it's, you know, all of them are big. But here, this, this is not the big gun. It is definitely one of them. Sustaining grace in those times of trial and suffering, Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for you, for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. The Bible says, let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so we come to the throne of grace that we might receive mercy. You get grace, you get mercy from grace. And when grace reached down by your faith, he gave you mercy. And when he gave you mercy, receive mercy, you find another portion of grace. And that's sustaining grace. It's grace reached down in your faith and gave you mercy. Mercy reached over and told you with your faith, 
that you believe and you walk and you try and find even more grace. Now, grace means that you must do something about it. That you got to say you got to, the, the Bible uses the word find grace. So you got to do something about it. I think in my greatest of struggles, Ron, I'm in the greatest struggle that I have today in my life. That I, 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 the only one person out of the sun who knows it is my wife. And you know what it is, Miss Clem? I really think my season at the link is up. I do. And I thought that for some time. And, and I, don't, I, don't, I know no one understands the struggle that I have with not wanting to do it anymore. It's time to move on to another church. But Miss Michelle said today, she said in her prayer, I sent out a prayer request. And everybody accepted the apology, but they didn't learn the lesson. Nobody got the lesson. So I'm saying, Lord, help them to not just see an apology, but pick up the lesson. And it didn't catch them. It, the lesson didn't catch them. And I said, Lord, that's my key, to, leave, to roll, to leave. Then Miss Michelle, God used Miss Michelle to say, his people perish for a lack of knowledge. And run, that one stuck me in the gut. It did. Because I was the one that stopped me. And then as I, my wife tells me that, just what, right here, sustaining grace. The Bible says, let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. That when you look for grace, you'll find it. And on yesterday, the Lord gave me a vision about the farm and the field. And the guy came, and he drew up the vision that we tried to put sticks out there to show him. If you go out there and look, you'll see a lot of sticks. And the guy drew the vision that God gave me. So here, here's the word. My grace, Kenneth Harold McMillan, it'll take care of you. For God's power is made perfect in my weakness. Yeah. So see, you know, Ron, when I, when, I, when I, sustaining grace is when God keeps you and you don't want to be kept. Yeah. When, when God will keep you and you say, Lord, I'm looking for an out. Give me an out. Then I get an interview about a job. Not in Ohio this time. In Carolina. You know, then you want to go again. And then God will give you a mission and a vision now you get to do your will on oh, his will. Now, where does this come from, Ms. Clem? It comes from the higher that you go in Christ, the bigger the demons that come at you. Yeah, the, the, not just principality, power, but spiritual wickedness that so many people don't get a chance to hit that level or when God is moving. But see, that's why we need grace. Because the deeper you go in Christ, the deeper that God's going to take you with him. Paul said that he had a problem in his life. And he told God that he prayed about it three times a day, every day. And God said, I still will not release you. He's not going to do it. He had a thorn in his flesh. Now, it's not a literal thorn. That was a struggle. He said, I got a major struggle. The thorn represents a major struggle. And I, and I think Ron is a pastor, as a teacher, that I've taught him about as far as I can take him. You know? But I'm saying, Lord, show me, help me, please. And I, I never talk about this struggle but with my wife. And I, I don't know, the, the church is never, I don't know. I'm not, but, dude, here's where I am. You don't ever want to get to where you don't care. And that's when God's grace sustains you. And you know you're leaning back on him. And he's got you. Sustaining grace is when God gets you. And he holds you. Now remember Paul said in the second letter to the church of Corinth in 2 Corinthians 12. He said, I prayed to, he, let, now, turn that for a second, let me show you something. Because one of the deepest in all of scripture, right here, 2 Corinthians. I got a lot I want to try and get in here tonight. I hope we can get it. Because I pray, Minister Stage, you can pick it back up next week, sir. Right. All 
All right. When, when you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul had a vision of para, paradise. And he, 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 he was talking about himself in verse 2. He said, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know whether out of the body. I don't. He was talking about a deep experience that he had with the Lord. He had a truly deep epiphany with the Lord. And he goes, verse 6, he says, though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool. I, I will speak the truth. But then it talks about the thorn in the flesh, verse 7. This is where I'm going. And lest I should be exalted above measure in the abundance of revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Now, he's, that's the second time he said that, about being exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities, which is what I'm doing right now, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You got to tell what your real struggle is. If you're going to boast, boast about what you really and truly struggle with. My strongest desire is to teach on a collegiate level and to write. I haven't lost the passion to pastor, but I know what my strongest desire is and I struggle with it. I struggle with it when people won't listen or won't do. I really, and it makes me not want to care anymore. Because see, I got mine. If you, if, I'm trying to tell you how to get it, and you won't get it. I don't. So when, when, when you talk about sustaining grace, is when God, see, people talk to me all the time and tell me what's going on with them. And I receive it. But I don't talk to anybody, and I may talk to my wife. But again, sustaining grace is protect your wife even from that. Protect her from even that. And Ron, here, here's why I am. Sustaining grace is when God upholds you. But God, if you're going to hold me up, if you're leaning upon the cross, you got to strengthen me while I'm on the cross. Are you with me? And now listen. Let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace. Get on your knees and go to the throne of grace. That I receive mercy. I receive mercy by being able to do this again right now. And he said, make me when you do that. You may find grace to help you in a time of need. Now turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Because I'm going to show you, I mean, you have to look at why you have to, again, it takes me 8, 10 hours for one sermon. I preached on Sunday. I preached and taught on Sunday. I had to study all day yesterday, a bunch of the day to get ready for an hour on Tuesday night. We together? Yeah. I just want to show you some people about this grace thing. It is, it is, it is just that wit real. I'm about to say it's that wheel. <laughs> All right, when you get to say, man. I got a chapter two. I'm sorry, chapter two, verse one. Here we go. You therefore, Paul, told his son, Timothy, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, what all he say he add to Christ Jesus? Nothing. Just be strong in the grace of Christ. And the things you've heard from men among men, which commit these things to faithful men who will be able to teach you also others. You therefore must endure hardships as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one entangled in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. You got to let some things and some people go in this life. If you're gonna be, if God's gonna take me higher and deeper, I got to leave some people, places, and things alone, that He may please Him who enlisted Him. Here we go. When you ask yourself, sustaining grace is going to take you to another part of grace, and when you ask yourself about that, 
you, when you turn back to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, the Bible says pray for all men. Tell them to fight the good fight. Glory to God for his grace. When you look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, do you find yourself in there? Do you find yourself in there about what God has done? When he did that, when, when, when God did that, when God gave that to me, he led me to, I had to read that first, chapter 2, then go back and reread chapter 1, Mr. Maker. Now go to um, verse 8, and I'm going to go. Remember what he says about uh, these things. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his presence, but share with me in suffering for the gospel. So whatever I struggle with, I struggle with it for the sake of the gospel. Whatever you struggle with, you struggle with it for the sake of the gospel, not for yourself. Regardless how heavy it is, you're not doing the heavy lifting. Christ has already done it. Watch where the Lord takes us. Uh, so, who has saved us and called us by his holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. So you mean he gave me a purpose and he gave me grace? And you got to look for more grace? Which was given us in Christ Jesus before time again, but has now re been revealed in the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher. Well, I've now gone. Regardless of what you want to do, sustaining grace, say you do it because Christ died for you, and you keep doing it even when you don't want to. And you know, regardless of what you want, when God gave me the vision just yesterday, I know my purpose still is not done yet. You understand? I, I know the purpose because the vision, when y'all see the thing, I'll send it to you if you want. You'll understand the vision of the, the field of Boaz. And that's the Lord, what do you call it? It's a field. You know what, you know what Boaz? Because he's our kinsman redeemer. Because he's our kinsman redeemer. When, when, people, when, when you read the Bible, do you find yourself in the scriptures? Do you look for yourself in the scriptures? Now, the last one I'm going to take to you, uh, we, we, remember, we went backwards. Now we're going to go to one more in 1 Timothy chapter, two, chapter 1, verse 12, and then we're going to get on with our paperwork. Anybody have questions in the comments? Can you hear me? Let, put, pull okay. it up to you. Pull it up. Yeah, there you go. Um, yes, sir. So I know um, Sunday, first can you said the link was your, was your girlfriend. Right. Um, and it feels like you're trying to break up with us. Um, and, I, and, I, and I was I was thinking, you know, because, you know, that's not really a healthy relationship, you know, if that's you know, where you want to go. Just just tell us. See, that's can, sustaining grace. Her, she's sustaining grace. So we can understand. Listen, Desiree, I'll just say this. Mm -hmm. The, the problem here is, is me. I don't, I don't have the long, I'm not patient. And I know that I'm not patient. I'm a lot of things but patient. I mean, I want it done yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I know that. It, it's still not right, but it's still who I am. And that's what I'm about to show you right here. I just say this. When, when, when the brook dried up with Elijah, he knew it was his time to go. Yeah. God went and fed him. And, and when God feeds with the raven, that means God fed me. But it's not my will, it's God's will. You'd rather I tell you the truth than to live a lie with you. Yeah. I, I'm not, I asked the Lord, and I talked to, to places about moving on going. The thing that holds me, when, when, when people pray for my wife, mm -hmm. that means the world to me because that's the one who holds me up. She's the one, I got a true Proverbs 31 wife, not sometimes. I'm talking about all the time. So that's what keeps me going is the wife that props me up. Because if, if, if she don't speak reason and to me and the word of God, I'm out. I'm gone. But I know that my season is not up because of what God, 
when I press it, who he is, when God do what he does about the field and he provides a way for it, I know that that's God's vision and mission and not mine. Right. It's not that I want to break up the link. It's just I, I, if I t- when people listen and they tell you where the heart really is, do you hear them? And I just ask church, I mean, you can judge me if you want to, right. but I still tell you where my heart is. And I, I tell you what, by the end of the night, my prayers that you'll understand, because I'm going to go through the rest of this grade. I got, I got a little something for you too, Pastor Ken. All so right. we was in Galatians 5, um, and we was looking up works of the flesh. Um, and when you were speaking, uh, I know you said you want to talk, teach on the collegiate level, and I, I believe it's because of the intellectual challenge that you feel like you I, you don't receive here at the level. Yes, ma'am. You are and spot so, on correct. And so I'm, 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 I'm going to chalk that up to selfish ambition. Um, <laughs> And I just, <laughs> and I just thought I'll to take let, it. yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. I mean, if, when you're guilty as charged, you just here's where I'm, Desiree. I, I don't necessarily want the collegiate. My, I, I want people who will talk back with me about the word, and don't just say I'm I'm stewing on it, I'm studying on it. What did the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit will speak. But people still shut it down. When I sent that thing to the intercessor and to the missing link today, I just told Tim, take me off the group me, and told Pam, take me off the intercessors. Because they see the apology, but nobody got the lesson in there. They, they just didn't get the lesson. They just heard the apology. And everybody said what everybody said. It's like, Ron, I know the Lord is speaking, but they're just not there. They are, that's just my opinion. And Desiree, I appreciate the thing about selfish ambition. I, I really, really, all jokes aside, I thank God for you and him speaking to you and you being a true daughter to me in the name of Jesus because that's what it's all about. When people who are real with you. Go ahead, man. Miss G says, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sustaining grace. This grace is like his peace that surpasses our understanding. So, Pastor, my prayer is that our Lord and Savior will uphold you. Remember Galatians 6 and 9. And let us, you, not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we, you, shall reap if we, you, do not lose heart. Amen. I don't want this to be a reverend moment tonight. I want to just... We're talking about being real at the link. One of our core values is honest in all things and, and relationships that are real. I mean, when you're real with people, they can talk to you and you can talk to them. You know, you're talking about investing all these thousands of dollars out there and you want to play pity pat game. No, we're not. We're talking about advancing the kingdom of God to feed people. But some people can't see that. that, that. But let's go to First Timothy chapter 2, chapter 1. Go ahead, Pam. And Jonathan Watkins says, keep watering us, Pastor, and in time we will get it, we will get to the next level. That's the second pastor today that has encouraged me, just out of the blue. It is. And I think, you know, sustaining grace, God knows what you need when you need it. I, see, that, that's just the, 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 the truth of the scriptures. God knows. God really does know. I just want people to get it. And I think sometimes I want them to get them so bad that it, it bothers me, and I'm stressed out because they didn't get it. You shaking your big old head, right? You mean? Because <laughs> I want, I want, them, I really want them to get it, and run. It's like they're, man. I'm so serious about this thing. But let's go. Let's go. What Paul says. Then we're gonna get back to the scriptures, all right? About grace. First Timothy chapter nine. We went backwards. Remember, the second Timothy. Now we're going to first Timothy. Here we go. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, because he enabled me. Enabling grace. That's the big gun. That Christ did it and I didn't do it. Selfish ambition. You think you did something that you did not do. But Christ enabled me because he counted me faithful. Because I did it whether I wanted to do it or not. He sustained me. Sustaining grace. Putting me into the ministry. That's the gospel truth there. For all of us. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and in unbelief. Again, grace followed 
the mercy. Every time you see mercy, look for grace. Every time in your life. When God gives you mercy, either you need to go and find the grace and give it to somebody else, but you need to do something about that grace. That is right here, verse 14. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's my, my, my life right there, was exceedingly abundant with faith, and which love which in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying Paul telling it. He's encouraging himself like David did in Psalm 23. David had to remind himself regardless of how bad it was that Saul is right there and David's hiding in a cage, a cave out of Dulham. That, that man want to kill him. But God's grace saved. And everybody in the world know John 3 and 16. They know John, I mean, uh, know the 23rd Psalm. The Lord, he is my shepherd. And I shall not want. See, that's what I need the Lord right now to, to lay me down in the pasture and lead me beside the still waters. Would you go? Yeah. Paul said, and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I'm the worst sinner that I've ever met before in my life. However, for this reason, there's that word again. I obtain mercy. Oh, my goodness, that's the conviction now. That in Christ Jesus might show all long suffering. That's the patience. Hmm. I didn't read that today when I read it. I had y'all set up, but I got set up. I didn't see that today. As a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. And he closed out with a benediction. Now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor, glory, and heaven. Sustaining grace. From sustaining grace, we go to the next one. Give me the next one. Should be relentless grace. The grace that waited on me, it came running after us. That's the grace that we're talking about, that came running after us. The next grace that I just went over that I put with sustaining grace was enabling grace. Give me the next one. Now, the, the last two that I want to talk about are this right here. If you will, turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. And I want to close out with one more. Now, we're talking about grace and what brought this on was I want everybody from leadership to, to whatever position, title, whatever it is God has you doing, in order we take all of God's grace... We take all of God's tender mercies. But how many of us give them back when it's time to give them back? That we're so good at receiving grace and mercy. We're so good at receiving it. But we got to make sure that we're willing to give it also. And here's why. Romans chapter 6, you get it? Say amen. All right, now, Romans chapter 6 Paul says we are, in chapter verse 1, he said we're dead to sin, but we're alive to God. And when you're going over, you know, you're going to see some things, but let's go to verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in its lust. The Bible says, regardless of what you're doing, don't let sin be king in your body. I'm going to take you somewhere. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, to cause you sin. But present, your, present yourself to God as being alive from the dead. That's what grace did. It made you alive in Christ and Christ alive in you. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Here's the highlighted verse I want you to highlight. For sin shall not have, Miss Desiree used to selfish ambition, right? For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, 
but you're under grace. Remember that, that the covenant that we have, we're not under grace. Now, whatever masters a man, whatever masters you, if it's yourself, whatever you choose, that's that same thing that's going to master you. If you choose to allow the word of God to master you, it'll master you. If you allow your flesh to master you, it'll master you. So you've got to get to a place where you understand what God is trying to say. Verse 16 through 23. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves, slave, you obey? That's what I'm telling everybody about this social media, about only getting your news from social media. You've got to turn to a reputable source to get information. The greatest source in the world is the Bible. But God needs for you to know what's going on right in this present age. Be quick to do that. Go to chapter 7, verse 6, your second point. Because we're not under the law, we're under grace. But now we have been delivered from the law. Oh, okay. I'm delivered from trying to keep all the law myself. Having died to what we were held by so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Here's the deal, people God. When you come in Christ, the oldness in you tries to take over the newness in you. It does. The law, the flesh in you, wants to wrestle, and we all struggle with it. Now, you go back to chapter 6, you see the last verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you want to go to the next level, you need to accept the gift that is from God which is eternal life. But people, God, you've got proper faith equals proper works. When you believe, you got to do something about it. Even when you can't do it, anybody ever known God's grace to hold you up when you couldn't hold yourself up? Or for God, you know, in Jesus' day, in, in John chapter 12, people saw miracles, and they, uh, they accounted them to the devil. And they called him Beelzebub. And, and when you look at now the miracles that happen, people would rather give credit to a man or not acknowledge the miracle and pretend like it never happened. They pretend like the, the miracle. COVID ravaged the world. God gave us not one, but two, but three vaccines as a form of protection, as a layer of protection. It's not a cure-all. But it stopped people. The death rate went down, bottomed out. The sickness rate went down because God performed a miracle. And people would rather deny the miracle just like they denied Jesus than acknowledge Christ gave us a miracle. And that's not science and that's not modern man. And that's not technology. That's the goodness of God to teach man how to do what he's doing. That's the kindness of a Savior. And the Bible says when it came, people did not recognize the kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, again, God does so much for us, but how much are we? I, I mean, I, I took the second vac vaccine shot yesterday. How can I not tell people to take the shot? It's saving lives. It's slowing out. It's stopping this virus in its tracks. I have to tell. I mean, I took it. But the same gift that God gave me, I have to be willing to pass on. You have to give God the praise. When he blesses you. So many people, God said, jump. To jump over him arms. I ain't gonna jump. What about if you jump and you think you're about to fall and God grab you? And he set you back down where he was. And he's you need to go through something else before you jump over him arms. He's gonna grab you with a finger and set you back down. What if God tell you to jump again? You jump, you jump in his arms. This time he got you, shown up, and he takes you somewhere else so he wants you to do something bigger and better. So many people are trying to live a safe life, safety over faith. And it's crushing the Christian church. Because safe is just another word for regret. People trust God and trust his word. I get more accommodation from nurses who tell me, keep pushing the vaccine. Black and white. Just keep pushing. Because so many people look like me are dying in the hospital every day. Just every day. Because they believe social media more than they believe in modern medicine and the word of God. Some of us, some churches prayed for a vaccine and the Lord blessed. 
Go ahead, Ms. Eva. Um, it's been continually coming up to me. This in Numbers 21 and 8, um, 21, verse 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. To me, is that, it's like with COVID, with the vaccine. All who looks upon it, all who takes it, okay, you're gonna, you can be pretty much covered. But even back in those days, they refused to even look up at it to be saved. I kind of like paralleled it together, seeming to me. Yes, ma'am. Right? Here's two things. Uh, number one, Moses still under the law, but he bring, Christ going to bring this under grave. Turn to John chapter 3. In John 3, he's going to talk about the same thing about it. That's why Christ had to be lifted up on that cross. When you look at John and why John said what he said, it'll make sense for him. And it, it's perfect, spot on, what you just said. That's my new word by day, spot on. Right. Go ahead, Miss Pam. It says, Who? God's grace truly does cover it? Terrence Denson. God's grace truly does cover a multitude of sin. I know I would not be where I am now if it weren't for his grace and mercy. I apologize for not getting the message within the apology. Knowing the Lord Jesus looks out for me unconditionally is a real blessing that I cannot thank him enough for. Thank you so much, Terrence. That, that, see, that, that's what, and, and you know what, Pam, that's what the message in the message was. It wasn't just re biblical repentance, because some people are so prideful to, to say, well, I didn't know this, or I don't know that. It doesn't matter what you knew. Can you, are you humble enough to just say, I dropped it, or I missed it, or I didn't get it, as opposed to trying to justify and explain yourself. Out of all my knowledge and all, everything I got, I was humbled by an 18-year-old, and you're 18, right? <laughs> I was humbled by a spiritual daughter of mine to say a selfish ambition. Now, I stand before you. Can I just deny that? No, because it is a selfish ambition. But how many people are willing to go to church and actually get healed and get help and tell the truth because God's grace saved you? I got more peace now with her statement about the, the uh, Galatians chapter 5 when it talks about a thing that are not of the Spirit, then it goes in 22 and it's going to tell you what the things, what the fruit of the Spirit, what they are. Let me ask Miss, Miss Eva's question right quick. Uh, let me explain it. All right, everybody knows John chapter 3. And this right here is about uh, being born again. You must be born again. And that's when you come out from under the law and come under grace. And here's what it said, Miss Eva, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Here's the hard part. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. A man may go to hell unsaved, but I promise you he won't go unloved because God loved him. A lot of folk going to go to hell unsaved but they won't go unloved. God loved them enough to send his son. But here's what, what happened, just like now. Then, now, and what's happening now? He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. Other people want to say there are other ways to heaven. That's not but one way. And that's what I'm preaching at the funeral tomorrow. I mean, there's no, no doubt about where I'm going. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I don't care what social media tell you, but all roads only. I have one way to God, and that's through his son Jesus. And here's what I'm going to tell you. And this is their condemnation, that the light is coming to the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light. Men love social media and the, the, the lies and the, the stuff, all the mess of the world, than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest their deeds be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deed may be clearly seen, that they may, be, may have been done in God. Here's where I am, Ms. Eva. The, the verse, when you go back over here, verse 14, and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. Jesus explains that later in the Gospels 12, 13, and 14. He said what that means 
is that Christ had to die on the cross, and that's more or less what that meant, that it was going to be a way of salvation because the nation of Israel were okay. They were fine when Moses lifted up the serpent on the stick. Are we together? So it, 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 the same way Christ must be lifted up, just like the serpent lifted up when Christ is lifted up, when he dies on Calvary for your sins and for my sins. Nico, you had a question? It wasn't really a question, more of a statement, but um, we, I don't know how we got to Galatians 5, but somehow we ended up there, and um, we were so stuck on the works of the flesh that we had to write down the fruit of the Spirit, and I wrote it down as weapons of God versus weapons of um, the devil and in the weapons of God he has in the fruit of the spirit he has nine of them and in the works of the flesh he has I kind of 18 so there's like double of what God is using and I, it just struck me as like God has such a narrow path that you have to follow and he don't need much to bring you down this path compared to all the weapons the devil need to draw you in. And I fell under a couple of other works of the flesh. But I don't want to talk about that. We ain't got to talk about that. <laughs> Listen, when Nico, here's the deal. And, and the Gospels, Jesus puts it this way. He tells them that there's a narrow way and there's a broad way. Mm. The broad way is the 18. The narrow way, that's the nine. And you see how the broad way is double what right. the nine is. See, we have holiness. We can't do what we want to do how we want to do it. Yeah. We just can't. But, you know, God will make a way to get us out of what we get out of. You know, God had y'all stuck in, Gal in Galatians because he knew where I was stuck at. Mm -hmm. He knew two people that I love would give me a message and I would receive it. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that's why you guys were stuck there to help me out. That's when God had you somewhere. That's why you got to tell what's wrong with you because sometimes God will give you a word that somebody else has that you need to hear. When people love you, they don't say it. They show it. They do it. Yeah. So I'm glad that God had you stuck there. You stayed stuck there, and you gave the message that he gave you. And that's how, as a pastor, God's going to give you a message. You, don't, you may not like the message. You may not want to give it, but you know you got to give this message because the Lord told you to give this message and not the message that you want to give. Uh -huh. Tomorrow, I want to do precious in the sight of the Lord, the death of his saint. Then I said, I want to do, Lord, teach us to numb his days. Lord said, that ain't what I told you to do. All of those are in his permissible will, right. but it's not his, I got his perfect will about where I'm supposed to go. Amen? Uh -huh. Amen. So I got to speak but people are not willing to listen. They're not willing to be transparent and vulnerable enough to say I didn't get it right, I didn't say it right. But that's the essence of Christ and Christianity. Christ cried so much because his people, the ones we came to say, they didn't get it. They didn't get it and haven't gotten it. As of today, they still haven't gotten it. They, they are, now take that back, some Messianic Jews. But the nation of Israel still has not gotten it. Turn to Hebrews 4 so I can get this. And then close out with one more. We got 16 minutes. Now, we went over this right here with the sustaining grace. In Hebrews chapter 4, the writer of Hebrews says this, that the world, it discovers our condition. The word, I'm sorry, can discovers our condition. The word of God, it, it'll show you who you are and where you are. But the key to, that's why people don't, uh, who, who are going to abide by social media, they're not going to abide by the Bible they, they, because the two clash. That, that, you know, social media is a, is a God all by itself. It's idolatry. Let us therefore be diligent to enter to that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobe disobedience. Remember that. I tell you what, see if Google can do this to you. <laughs> For the word of God is living. Google ain't a lie. 
is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of your soul. Google can't pierce your soul either. And your spirit. Now your soul is who you are. The spirit is what the Holy, when God breathed the breath of life into you. And your joints and marrow, that's your body. The man is made up of spirit, body, and soul. When you die and you will die unless the Lord comes back. Your spirit goes back to God who breathed the breath of life into you according to Ecclesiastes 12. And then earth to earth, ash to ash, and dust to dust. Whether you go back to the dust or you get your body cremated, ash, earth to earth, ash to ash, and dust to dust. But your soul, you get to determine where it goes. And all the way it goes to heaven is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. There is no other way. None whatsoever. For the word of God is, is living and powerful, sharpening the two-edged sword, piercing even to the division. It'll divide your soul and your spirit and your joints and marrow. That's what's going to be the determining factor at the judgment for you. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's what, see, the word, I, I can try, but who would ever thought God would use Desiree to give her? No, that's what I'm saying, you know, because you never know. But when you confess, that's when the healing comes. The healing comes when you tell the truth about where you are. And that's not to judge anybody when they're struggling. It's just you tell people who you love and who love you. I, I just want you to listen. I don't want you to judge. Just listen. And that's, that's a, a great percentage of counseling. Listen. Because they'll tell you the answer. If they don't tell you the answer, God will send an apostolic voice to give you the answer. Watch what it said. There's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things, regardless of what you put out there on social media, is naked and open to the eyes to whom you must give an account. You don't have to give an account to social media, but you will give an account to God about what you did about it. Now, I'm not anti-social media. I'm not anti-Google. I'm not. But when people want to challenge me and the word of God about they believe in Google more than they believe in God, I need to pray for their soul and salvation. When they want to brag on Google more than they can brag on God, something's wrong. And I'm here to tell you. Let me not stop telling you. They, they'll believe more in the internet and social media than they, they won't open the word of God up. But they'll read that uh, thing out there all day, social media all day. Now the, the word's going out by social media. I believe in social media. I just believe if people don't get God's word, they get caught up in the wrong thing. Here we go. Let me just close out with verse 14, 15, 16. Seeing then we have a great high priest, Jesus, who passed through the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast. Our, stand up for what you believe in, regardless of who like you and who don't like you. Have a confession made for Jesus Christ, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize us with our weaknesses. Jesus at, in the, at the Rock of Agony in the Garden of Gethsemane did not want to go to Calvary. He didn't want to go through. The man in him, but the spirit in him said, not my will, but your will be done. He's my grace. Lord, God Almighty. So Christ understands me. He understands when you're going through things, but he has provided a way for you, Nico, the narrow way. You may not want to go in the narrow way. Lord, I like the broad way. It's lit up. It's pretty. Everybody's over there. I still want you to go on the narrow way. That's what Christ is, on the narrow way. For we do not have a high priest who can have sympathize with our weakness, but was all points, tempted as we are, yet without sin. He was perfect, and he was sinless. God gave us his unlisted phone number. Dream, God, it's me. And he pick up right when you call him. His unlisted number, that secret private number, that just only you have for him. He give it to you. You can get in touch with him anytime. Verse 16. Since that this is the deal, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Come and say, Lord. I am struggling, I'm struggling, and I'm struggling. And God said, I give you mercy, and that mercy is named Desiree Howell. Then you find grace to help in a time of need. There it is. And the prescription is right there before us. 
I'm going to ask you to, to do one last favor before we go because I wanted to get this grace thing out. Come on, Desiree. Um, yes, oh, um, I had a question about for... In Hebrew, so in that same section, so God said, I saw my wrath, they should not enter into my rest, right? So we trying to understand um, who he was talking to. So he was talking to, the they left from Egypt, they were with Moses, the Israelites, right? Yes, ma'am. Right. Um, and then so when he says, you will not enter into my rest, is that like you would have to work every day instead of the rest that you would have if no, you no. believed in me? They didn't believe in him mm -hmm. and what he said. Um, they murmured, they complained all the time, and only two of the adults made in. That was Joshua and Caleb and some younger people than them went in, but they didn't enter to his rest. His rest at that time was in Canaan. We have a different rest now. When he talked about disobedience, millions of them did not make it in. Only right. two made it in. Mm -hmm. Then when they get over there, they're going to send the 12 spies to go look at it, and only two are going to see what God promised. Mm -hmm. There's not but a few people who are going to be in leadership who are really going to get it. Thank you. Outstanding. Turn to Revelation chapter 2, 22, and we're going to close out here. I'm going to close out with a warning. Guys, this, this thing on grace, I think I'm going to try and write up a series on grace because it's so huge. Grace is why, that's Calvary right there, right? That's cross. It's why, it's just, it, 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 it's, grace is so huge. And we get so much grace and so much mercy in a day. But how much do we give? Do you think you don't get back some of it because you won't give away any of it? Because we just won't give it away. Revelation chapter 22. John, an older version of John, has learned a lot of things. And in verse 12, he said, And behold, Jesus testifies to the churches. He said, Behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his word. I am the Alpha and I am the Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. We went over that in Sunday school. Go down to verse 18. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of prophecy of this book if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in the book. If anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city and from things which are written in this book. But here, I want you to catch 20 and 21. Remember, we're looking for grace, right? He who testifies these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so come. Lord Jesus. There it is. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The word of life itself, the word of God itself, closes out with God's grace. That's all right. So we know what the end's going to be. It's all about, it was, it was all about the grace of God. Grace and truth came. How many people accepted it? How many people accepted it but how many people gave it back out? Grace and truth came. Grace is here. Grace is, you know, you know as I think about this thing, Desiree, it, the selfish ambition there, but I, I think the problem is, is me with long suffering and patience. Because I want people to get it yesterday. I don't possess that virtue of the fruit of the Spirit, long suffering. And, and I know I'm not patient. I, I know this. Pray for me. And that, I, that I get the long suffering. Because when you're not patient, you're not loving. You're not loving the way God wants. See, I can get off the intercessor and I can get off the group me in. But you can't get off Jesus once you're in. You just can't do it. Next week, we're going to go into, uh, back to our lesson and start from there. I pray that you got the grace, and I pray that we can, uh, I can write up a series on it when we come back. Go ahead, uh, Casey. I just had a quick question. Reading over Hebrews 4, uh, my question is um, in verse 15 and 16, 
where it talks about Jesus being the high priest that sympathizes with our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And then in 16 it says, let us therefore, and you always tell us to be careful of the worry. So we can come boldly to the throne of grace because Christ can sympathize with us and our weaknesses. Yeah, you remember Christ, the person of God in Jesus Christ walked this earth. And every temptation known to man, he went through them. And so, he, and, but he was perfect and he didn't, he never sinned. So that's why we follow him because regardless of what, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, he struggled, the man in him and the spirit in him struggled greatly. So when people struggle greatly, tell God, and then you go to the throne and say, Lord, I'm, I'm struggling. I've been saying it all day, screaming it. I get to church, don't get an answer, and God used Desiree to give me the answer. What do you gather? That's not the source I was looking for. But when you look for grace, God will give it to somebody who you don't expect to don't want, but God will give it to you. You got another question? No. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? That thing that you ask for, if you ask for long suffering or pay, you know, patience or whatever, if you ask for that, is that the thing that God is going to continue to test you in until you get it? I, that's my personal opinion. I, I think I'm, I'm so <laughs> always tested in that area. I do because it's God, because no, you I, don't I, have it yet, right? I, I know. I mean, but I do want it. <laughs> But I want it on my terms. And that's not how it goes. I, I really do want it. But God loves me enough to say, look, man, I mean, I know you, 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 where you're struggling. You can struggle, but surrender and pray. Paul said his solution was to pray, and God still didn't release. Keep praying and keep moving. Keep doing what you got to do. Amen. We start the lesson next week on page, what now, 70? 72? 72. 71. We started on 71. Uh, John chapter 14, starting at around verse 7, I think. Just read from 7 to 14. I think that'll get us caught up. All right, guys, the funeral is tomorrow at Jones Brother Funeral Home. We will be socially distant. Everyone is required to wear a mask. We will funeralize Mr. Joseph Atencio tomorrow at one o'clock and we pray we will not be in the building more the funeral director they really don't like doing them indoors anyway um, but they said they'll let, let you do it socially distant uh, with a mask i will wear my mask as i deliver the word and um after that they got another group coming in they got to sanitize the place so you got to be out of that heat they got to do a military service then we're going to do a, a little thing i'm going to give a sermonette and we're gone so if you can make it, please do. The children, his grandchildren, the four of them, they really need you if you can make it. They, because they're taking it hard. But come. Alicia's taking it hard too. But please come if you can. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much today in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for speaking to us in real time. We see you, we know you, we acknowledge you, and we believe in you, Lord Jesus. Please forgive us for our sins. Lord, I say personally for me, this long suffering, you understand my struggle. You really do. And I confess it to you. I confess it to the world. Lord, I ask for prayer. I ask for a change, not in those people, but in me. Lord, help people who are struggling, whatever they're struggling with. You know who they are and you know what they're struggling with. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for my wife, for a Proverbs 31 wife. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I see your sustaining grace in her. And Father, we ask you tonight if you would bless the attend to your family. Uh, help those children, Lord, or give us the words to give to them on tomorrow. Father, we ask you for traveling mercies and graces as we go home in the rain and in the storm. Thank you for teaching us about grace, Lord. And Father, we look forward to coming back together again soon and very soon. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please help us, God. Help us, King Jesus. Lord, we love you so much. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed, people of God. Let's go home. <laughs>